going to our next session of the day on a very interesting subject topic, Credit Risk Management with Faith Lex. And to present this, I would like to go on stage with a big round of applause, Mr. Sakya Das Gupta, Vice President, Head of APAC, Faith Lex. Welcome to stage, Sakya. Looking forward to a great session from you. Thank you so much. Power in the back. Morning, morning, everyone. Uh, we'll start with a, a little bit of a video and then we'll uh, move into the actual content. Yes, sir. Alex, our focus on delivering cutting edge digital regulatory solutions for financial institutions and supervisors. The data management platform enables you to clearly define data ownership and create a for complete, accurate, and timely data to deliver successful data projects by automating and streamlining data curation workflows across the enterprise. Our multi-country regulatory reporting solution enables easy automation and ongoing change management of regulatory reporting requirements across jurisdictions while helping you increase efficiency and compliance oversight. Our supervisory data collection platform facilitates seamless information exchange between supervisors and reporting entities by creating a versatile and fully integrated environment to cater to the dynamic regulatory requirements. We offer best-in-class solutions for enterprise data management, regulatory reporting, and supervisory data collection that are intuitive, reliable, scalable, integratable, and maintainable. www.fintalix.com Of all the machine learning models that are coming up. 
So now your risk quantification is not at a broad segment wise, but it can actually take decision at a much, much micro scale. What I'm going to do now, one of the customers is onboarding. This is where the difficulty earlier was to understand the early morning signals. So where there has been a huge change over the last 10, 15 years to look into how the portfolio monitoring is happening. So now the ML models are being used to detect early morning signals to look into whether there is a development of a payment perspective to literally help the organization to do a complete portfolio restructuring and also help the customers to look into whether they can ask for a credit line extension or not. While the NPA has decreased to a you know, decade ago, that's a fantastic viewer and uh, kudos to all the financial services, credit officers here to enable that, still the NPA management is something which is very important. From a perspective of how you manage it, RBI has higher guidelines have changed over the last one, one and a half years. And finally, to ensure that you have the right kind of collection strategy. These all are actually seen together, the entire credit and price cycle is seen together through multiple innovations that are happening. Be it on analytics side, be it on AI side, be it on simple automations. Logical automations are also helping the uh, banks to take decisions faster, take better decisions, and ensure that they have a much cleaner book as, as of today. Still, some challenges remain, and this is something I think I'm sort of collating all the information that was spoken about uh, in a previous panel. So, if I look into if, you know, the top section of the uh, presentation, if you see, data is a common word. So the data in the data still remains. There is plenty full of data. Challenge is how do I use that data throughout the life cycle of taking a decision? From an availability perspective, still we have the JC, but still the income indicators to actually say that in the NSP, the small segments, how they are actually uh, have, other than the cash flows, is that the right way to determine their income? Still, there are challenges from a verification perspective. When we talk about QIC documentation, from a data availability perspective, there is a new risk which is going to emerge, which is on the ESG side. So, are you going to do business with you know, economically and environmentally friendly organizations? So, that's a big question that is coming up. I, RBI, as part of the Green Review, they are coming, they have come up with a consultation process a uh, few months back. But we are all waiting for the actual decision to come in. But the question is whether the data will get available. When you are actually dispersing loan or when you are trying to do the underwriting, are you going to get enough data to take a decision whether you are going to do business with the right kind of great economic companies? Second part, from a data restriction perspective, is also going to be really really sort of a headwind for the economic industry. Why I say so? GDPR and EI related restriction of usage is actually going to be a uh, bad story for the industry per se. Because PI needs to help us get into the most personal level, which is probably and for all the right reasons, not going to be there tomorrow. To that extent now if I have to screw the data and somebody invokes the right to forget. Those kind of challenges, how do I store the data in a way? So that if somebody as a consumer evokes that right to forget, how do I make sure that they, their data is deleted from the internet database of us? So data restrictions are going to again, it is uh, evolving area, it is going to create challenges, but where it is heading to is very, very uh, straightforward that you, know, you are not supposed to use PI data for any kind of decision making. Third, I think problem of lending. We do have data. Scorecards, instead of getting decided with, let's say, 10 to 50 parameter, now there are hundreds of parameters. Question is whether the right data is coming at the right time with the right quality. So, data silos will remain across organization. 
Uh, we work with most complex organizations and some of the new age organizations. As the complexity arises within the organization, we see more and more data silos getting created. Coming to the process related challenges, as we first discussed, regarding governance challenges. We are uh, we have been talking about AI, ML, we have been talking about visionary models, unfortunately, RBI, and unfortunately, some of them are black box. As a lot of the previous analysts highlighted this as a risk, the governance mechanism around AI is limited at this point in time. So, how do you make sure? that your organization is using responsible AI is going to be a big challenge for all the organizations. That's on the AI side, but on the normal process side also, governance mechanism is going to be very critical for success of any kind of credit division. Manual process, though we have been talking about it, everything is automated, but honestly speaking, when I walk into any organization there, and when I speak to them deep time, we figure out there are multiple manual processes that are still existing. And finally, this is a well discussed lack of the skill sets. Uh, we have business, we have technologies. Uh, the challenge is understanding of a statistical model. When I talk about a P value, when I talk about type 1 and type 2 error, it seriously goes up about the head for many, many, many of my audiences. So that's why it is really, really becoming a big problem. Who understands a correct ML model output? So, what should the organization do? Financial organization. So, I think there are six ways for prescription that I would propose. First, from a value proposition perspective, there are a lot of experimentations going on. Which one is going to be correct? Which one is going to be wrong? How do you know that at the start of the journey? It's very, very difficult to predict. But if you're paying very fast, the ingredients can be created, you can iterate multiple times and ensure that you have the right way to move forward. Second is the alignment between the teams. Uh, this function, typically, as some of the panelists previously mentioned, is looked as somebody who is going to be you know, in front of the business and saying that don't do the business. So, how to get the entire function? and enter teams aligned to the same thought of doing business in the correct way. And bringing the agility within the team and making sure that they are understanding exactly where the challenges are. Upscaling the team uh, given absolutely. Looking into the customer in interface. So for example, one, one of the uh, previous analysts was talking about they are developing loans to semi-literate, illiterate, uh, customers. So, to that extent, how do you make sure there is a verification in front of the, the, in the customer interface itself so that your queries go down? The amount of trouble and friction to onboard a customer goes down. Simple. If pictorial representations are made in a particular screen, somebody who doesn't understand English, somebody who doesn't understand the way you want to write some very, very complicated legal language. It becomes easier for them. So, for process of building an interface will be easy, which is conducive to what they uh, actually need, and very quickly uh, making the customers understand. Technology, using of smart technology, and uh, I want to restrict it, it's smart technology, AI, ML, RPA, uh, tons of technologies are there, but ensuring they are the enablers. It's not a man or a human versus patient, rather it's a, it's a sort of decision making which is a you collaborative know, effort. Finally, uh, where we have seen the broken silos in those organizations, which creates let's say data silos as well as process silos, uh, lack of integrated workflow. So basically this is another area I think greatly critical for the business to understand you know, how do I create an integrated workflow. So these are all very difficult time consuming thing to sort of add up. This is one way of doing it. The other way is of course if you can quite in place. So a quick two minute summary about what, who we are. So we exist to build trust and stability in an open and interconnected financial system. Uh, on one side we have uh, the supervisor, we work closely with many supervisors across the globe. 
helping them to understand the risk they face from the regulatory activities, from the participating regulatory activities that they have. Uh, we have platforms which collect data from the summation that is being done by regulatory entities, help the regulators to take uh, macroeconomic decisions through micro integrated processes. And the second set of customers we have are, of course, the regulatory entities. We are working with many of you in the room, many, uh, uh, most of the largest banks in India as well as across the globe. Uh, we have boutique of risk and regulatory solutions, which helps the uh, from a perspective of automation as well as it's a low code front end driven kind of solution. So this is what we're doing. Then, uh, in terms of we have a very platform oriented approach of solving credit risk related problems, so to say. Uh, what I mean by that we have a standardized platform, uh, we have what we call a standardized data platform. So we have we know that they, they will lies in the data as I highlighted earlier. So we want to solve the data problem first before going into business businesses. So that's how we do it. There's a synergic platform which looks into data collection, data purification, synergizing the data. Next step is energizing the data, analyzing the data. So here we know inner models, your room engines, your workflows are embedded. And finally, only the dissemination of the data to relate for the various downstream use cases. On top of that, there are multiple use cases. We have something called as alternate credit mentioning, which helps the banks to uh, look into the credit mentioning from as a challenger. Uh, there are multiple ways to plug into the system to be using alternate data. It can be used as a challenger model to the traditional model. It can be used as a second level of verification for the rejects which are happening through the traditional model, or it can be used as a completely separate uh, model altogether. So these are set of in models which are running on top of the uh, Fintech data platform. Second is what we call as borrower assessment and monitoring solution. Again, another low code front end driven workflow and even models. Here again, the same data we are using for alternate verification. Plus, plus data, both externally fed as well as internal data, uh, those are getting sorted out from an early morning season perspective. Here, the most important part I want to highlight that you know, what we realize are the traditional early morning season solutions that we see in the market, uh, their focus is on that particular entity. Their focus is in looking into, let's say, you know, uh, who are the co promoters, whether there is any bad news. Uh, whether there is anything challenging with that particular company and so on and so forth. Challenge is when we are working with some of our, our, our customers, we figured out that it is not the bad news or the negative news for that particular organization, but rather the supply chain. So, for example, if I just give us one simple example, let's say if I'm CCD and as a CCD is your customer, so you're providing loan to CCD. Everything is good at CC level, they are expanding. However, they are procuring coffee mix from various uh, geographies in India. And all of a sudden, there is some problem at the coffee mill level, or let's say people who are producing coffee, they go for a strike. So it impacts that direct value chain for them to impact that. So that's how we have sort of created multiple speeches around supply chains of multiple industries to make sure that you are taking a more holistic decision. Finally, non-performing assets. So this is again one area, this is a, a sort of a well-documented, we have been awarded both globally as well as in India for the solution. Uh, we uh, work with multitude of banks on the non-performing asset solution. It's an automated workflow driven solution. Uh, doing two things, one as a recognition, uh, your uh, classification, declassification, uh, middle stage, everything which is generally required. But on top of that, it helps you to also look at who you are doing this. It looks it helps you to look at the primitive custom, custom collection strategies. So from our side, that's it. Uh, there are two minutes left for the uh, for, for my session. Any questions? Any feedbacks? Yes, please. Thank you so much, Satya, for that wonderful presentation. Uh, in the interest of the time, we can take two good questions. So, can we have, yeah, we have uh, the gentleman over there. Uh, please introduce yourself and your organization and request to keep one question only. 
Yeah, yeah hi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sajjan. I am from Yes Bank of India. Uh, yes Bank. And uh, the question what I have is to what extent you can go from uh, the NBA recognition to daily DPD and then further analysis? Can we get some input or insight sure. from your side? So, we need to open up the books for you, definitely more than happy to do that. But uh, simply put, we are doing it one of, in one of the largest banks on a daily basis, uh, processing about 57 petabytes of data. That's the volume that we have processed for them. Uh, initially, when it was on party business, the entire process is to run for 36 hours. So the challenge that was posed to us, can we reduce it to less than 5 hours? So, proud to say that we have been doing it right now after a lot of reaching in the solution itself. It's a big data based platform on PySpot. Now, the internal in terms of recognition, decrediting, recognition, debating, updating, as well as the reverse phase going back to the source system, is happening under two and a half hours. So, uh, anything further uh, for the uh, issuance of notices, automated notices under section 14 and further? Uh, that is something we have not picked up, but anyways, we are picking up. I think we have a second phase for this problem. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, we take one final question from the floor. And I'm sure our correct Safi and the entire team is available throughout the day for any questions. Yeah. Any further questions? Please raise your hand. Alright. So, first of all, a big round of applause to Safi and And I would like to call on stage Mr. Sajjan Bawari, Address, Learning President from UP Small Finance Bank, to kindly do the honors. Sajjan, thank you so much for doing the honors. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sakya Razuta, and a wonderful presentation we heard from him on credit risk management with FinFlex. Thank you so much, Sakya.